Hi guys and welcome to episode 8 of my knitting podcast. My name is Marlene and I'm a knitter from Marburg, Germany. Today I'm going to talk about some of my finished objects, some works in progress and some acquisitions again. So this is a standard podcast format this week. I am planning on doing something related to my stash, so kind of like a stash tour, showing you what I have in stash in maybe two, three weeks time. I have a few days of work this month at the end of the month, so I was planning on filming an extra video then. Um, there is also going to be a small little giveaway in this uh, video, in this episode to say thank you for 2,500 of you guys deciding to subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm so grateful for everyone who is joining the channel and for everyone who's interacting in the comments and helping each other out with like very um, clever <laughs> tips and tricks um, about the craft that we are all loving. And um, I'm knitting on one of my whips at the moment, but to start off this episode, I won't put it away and show you my first finished object, which again, I know it's um, it's ironic that I said in the last episode that I couldn't be <laughs> wearing my newest FO every time because I can't knit that fast. And here I am wearing my newest FO, <laughs> but that's only because this is a Lento. I knitted this taking part in the Let's Lento Cal by Amy Palco and Rebecca Claw. And um, yeah, so this I think I made in like two and a bit weeks. This was like the fastest knit I've ever done. So I knitted a size three in this. And contrary to the fact that I said that I had bang on gauge, I did measure my gauge again. And I think I am off by like two rows. So I think this is supposed to have like a 15 by 21 gauge. 15 stitches by 21 rows is like supposed to be 10 by 10 centimeters. And I think I got 15, so I got the stitch gauge bang on. But then the, the row gauge by some, I don't even know why. I only realized while swatching for my next lento. <laughs> Because, like Amy Palco said, you can't just knit one lento. It is not possible. <laughs> um, so by some, I don't know, weird fact, when I was measuring that gauge swatch, I realized I had 23 stitches on like 10 centimeters, like the 23 rows. And then I got like went back to this and measured my gauge on this and it had the same gauge. So I don't know, this fits really well. I um, picked size three to have it like, a, to be a bit more size fitting. Most of my other knits until this point have been or more of like an oversized fit. I've mostly knitted size L, although like from my measurements, I'd be in between like a medium and large in most uh, sizes. And so I knitted this with the, uh, four ply merino wool cone. This was a 500 gram cone, 500 gram cone in Moscow Brown by Woolly Knit. And you can see how much I've got left of this. It's actually mad how little I used of both of the yarns that I used. The other yarn that I used was the Drops Alpaca Unicolor, um, which was in Loden. So Loden and Moscow Brown. They both together made this beautiful marled effect that you can see here. I'm also going to put in pictures. Um, the wrist, um, the sleeve length is actually kind of like a nice bracelet length, which is something that I haven't knitted before. Mostly I'm like, I'm into like pretty long sleeves, although with like more chunky knits, although they're not chunky, but like they're a bit more oversized. I like the length of the sleeve to fit that oversizedness and not like them not being too short. Although this was supposed to be like a three quarter length sleeves, I think. So I already made them longer than the um, pattern suggested. So it changed. It didn't change much after blocking. This was the first sweater where I took 
like exact no the second actually with my zipper sweater I, I did the same thing so I've always been hugely into blocking because my one of my two friends who um, taught me how to knit continental she is like very uh, advanced she's a very advanced knitter um, and she taught me that blocking is really important and she taught me with my Marseille sweater actually how to do it and how to like lay it flat and like um, bring it into the into the shape that you want it to be in and then like um, put it down with the not only with the T pins but she also had those like uh, bigger pins and like um, yeah she did it very professionally and so I learned it from her how to do it really and um, with a zipper sweater and this sweater I did take measurements before and after blocking to like see how the garment changed just because I'm very curious about these things and I'm also knitting on a super wash sweater at the moment and I really don't want that to grow anymore I am knitting in the large and I don't want it to grow anymore so I'm going to talk about that in a minute but um, yeah I just want to know and learn more about the fibers and how they act <laughs> pretty much so I did take I, I did write down, down all of these informations and if you want to know any more about any of the projects that I'm showing you Maybe except for the accessories, I'm not sure again how I'm treating those, if I'm going to put them into my Ravelry again. But if you want to know any more about this, you can have a look at my Ravelry. I'm going to post it or link it in the description box below as well. And um, yeah, I'm trying to be like very good with Ravelry at the moment. Also, it does, yeah, I'm very much like, I like, like, I like to be organized. <laughs> So I did also organize my, my stash on there um, just recently, which maybe I'm going to talk about like a bit more when I'm finished this. So if you have any more questions about this, like I said, I've swatched for my second Lento already. Um, it's just it's just so nice to make. It's a different, different construction from what I've done before. It's more of like a sweatshirt style. I did like a long tail cast on, but like really easy neck. I haven't done one of these necks before. I've always done like the folded down and like sewed or knitted on um, the cast on edge style. But I, I actually quite like it. It's quite tight to get over your head, but that also means it doesn't like poke out anywhere. And yeah, so if you if you have any more questions about this, feel free to, to ask them. So the second finished object I don't actually have with me anymore. It was the Hitchhiker Beanie by Spectacular Strick. Um, yeah, I gifted that one to my mom. I actually made the smaller size because I measured my head and my measurements were at like the larger range, like at the larger end of the small size range. But I like my beanies to be like a more oversized fit and this one was really snug. <laughs> and because my mission this year was to like knit or find the perfect beanie for my mom, I took it with me when I was visiting her and I told her to like close her eyes and I put it over her, her head and just had a look if I liked it on her. And I was like immediately, yeah, she looks so cute in this. <laughs> so I just gifted it to her for like no reason other than I love her. <laughs> um, yeah, which was so nice. I'm going to link all the materials that I use for it, all the yarn. So I don't know if I'm going to make the pattern again. I enjoyed making it. I did mess up by some reason. I don't even know why. I did, I think, like I felt like I followed the instructions, but my um, decreases looked really different from the decreases that were on the product pictures in the pattern so I don't really know what happened there it still looked fine and it looked like other decreases on other hat constructions but I just didn't for some reason <laughs> I wasn't able to um, replicate the pattern exactly which brings me to my next FO which is also a, a pattern by Spectacular Streak it's the crew headband I'm going to Hold it up like this so there is I feel like there is 
a theme with Spectacle Strick and me. The patterns are actually really easy. I like how they look, I like the product pictures, which is obviously the reason why I thought to make them. For this one I used leftover yarn, this is Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, which I um, had left over from my sweater number 23, and a ball of Silky Kit by Creme Casso Wool, which I had left over from my sweater number 18. So both of them were not broken into and I still have the leftover with me now. Um, I'm also going to put in the notes how much I use of each. So but this, I think the my, my like toxic trade with knitting is that I don't think that I need to gauge swatch for small projects. Which you guys, be smarter than I am. <laughs> I should have gauge swatched because this is too tight for my head. I, I can try to put it on, but I don't know if it's going to look any. I mean, I wouldn't usually wear it with my head down, with my head down, with my hair down. This was actually something that I wanted to make because I am wearing my, ha my hair up in like a ponytail um or like not all of the time especially when working because i don't want my like hair to fall into my face when i'm working obviously or when i haven't washed it <laughs> um because i don't i don't want to i don't want it to stick up like this but i'm not going to put up my hair now it is very tight around my head and i did block the heck out of it but it just doesn't give anymore <laughs> and also i don't know the cast on edge is like like the cast off edge is like it was supposed to be. It's like a tubular cast off, um, bind off, I'm sorry. But the cast on edge is just not correct. There is something went wrong there. <laughs> and I don't know what happened. So the, the pattern calls for you to use three strands. But I had this one ball, pulled one strand from the middle of the ball and then the other one from the outside. And I was like, how am I supposed to like get the third one? So I could have obviously tried to make it work, but I didn't want to. And because I didn't swatch for it, this is kind of a bit sad because I would have loved to have a headband like this. I also made it a bit too narrow. I think I should have, that was just purely because it, it hurt quite a lot to make this. I don't know if it was just like the combination of the yarn and the needles. Um, I think I could have used like one needle size up for it to be more comfortable. Also I did do um, knitting on, um, I'm sorry, my words don't come easily to me today. Um, I, I did it on magic loop and I don't know for what reason, it's like this, the some kind of double knitting technique I think, but the technique was actually hurting my, my wrist quite a lot. So I did want this to be finished and I wanted to use it and wear it but yeah I think I will wear it still maybe I will block it again and try to like pull it a bit more or maybe this is also going to be something that I'm giving away <laughs> um, because apparently there are people in my family that have smaller heads than I do I don't know yeah I'm not sure if I said everything that I wanted to say about this but this pattern I would definitely do again make again I like that it's not like um, sewn up inside, so it's just like knitted in the round without having to, because I saw that Petite Knit has brought or is bringing out a weekend headband and that one looks nice as well, but this pattern I already bought, so I think I'll stick with this. I'll make it a bit longer, I'll gauge swatch before, but I just thought I'd be so like clever, use up some of my scraps, and make a beautiful headband and now I'm paying the price for not gauge swatching. And yeah, I also made a couple of mistakes uh, just because I was getting used to the pattern, but I think that's okay. I'm just, it's handmade, that's okay. Actually, I was saying that I should be doing a Sophie scarf for my friend's birthday, but I really don't want to. Like thinking about making a Sophie scarf is actually like making me feel things not so good things. I, I think I'm like over it. I, I don't know. I have the yarn. I could do it. 
but I know she has a smaller head than I do. And I know she's like an outdoorsy person as well. So maybe this needs to go to her because it's in the same color that I would have, like in the same color way that I would have done the scarf. And I could do the scarf for like Christmas, like get a bit more time to make a Sophie scarf again. Yeah. So my next finished objects are these macaron mittens. They look a little bit like this. This was a test knit for my friend Lydia, her um, designer or Instagram and YouTube name is Lydia Hababa and um, she made this pattern which she then had um, three of her friends, including me, <laughs> um, test knit and the test knit was actually sponsored by Olivia and Oliver Fibers, which obviously is a contributing factor to me saying yes. The other factor is she's my friend. And the third factor is I wanted to have mittens for the longest time because I do have those like fingerless mittens, but I wanted something for um, winter time when it's like really cold. These are made with the Surrey by Olivia and Oliver in the color Woodland and the sock yarn is called seashore they are so nice i made like a tiny amount of alterations to the pattern that i like more like we gave her all of our feedback and i really enjoyed them i think they they look so nice i used less than half of both of them so these are the colors. This is woodland and seashore, which like, I love to see how they turn out. Like the small, um, the small orange and pink specks and the overall like really nice beigey brownie color. I really enjoy them. I will keep you like, up to date on when my friend will bring them out. Um, like I said, they're just a really nice construction and I'm looking forward to like the last couple of really cold days <laughs> here where I can wear them and like actually have warm hands for a change. <laughs> so the nice thing about this is that I can do something else with the rest of the yarn. So I could do some gloves as well. Her um, pattern will include the glove and the mitten option, so you can pick and choose which one you like more. Um, and I could also do some socks or some other scrappy projects. She also has a free uh, pattern for some scrunchies, which I wanted to test out for some time and make some with that. And I think actually, yeah, the color would also make a beautiful scrunchie as well. This is still a whip. I know this is taking longer than other sweaters that I made in the past, but this is also a fingering sweater. And also, I do think that I don't want this to end because of the yarn. This is my Monday sweater. This is now bound off at the end with Turbula or Italian bind off. So I took this to the cinema once and made like, I don't know, during one film I made like five centimeter progress on the body, which was actually really nice. So I have a few confessions to make about this. So I realized I was holding it out the wrong way around the last time I spoke about it. And I had actually sewn in the label at the front which I don't know how that happened, but when I was able to put it on for it the first time after finishing the body, like I wanted to get that done, take out the needles, and now start with the arms. I realized everything that I had told you guys, like the with the mistake that I made, I had to secure it again, where I dropped the stitch, it's on the back side, which makes it even less dramatic. Also, all of the parts where I had interchanged um, the hangs, it's on the back side. 
the only thing, so that is all good news, right? The only thing that I would really like feedback from you guys, like, how do you do that? If you've knitted raglan before, like I said, this was my, this is my second, this is my third raglan, and my first was the zipper sweater. I've run into the problem of having like a bit of unevenness at like two points, right? Like at the high part of the chest, like the neck. I think this is due to the short rows and I can show you on this um, sweater even better. Like it's not a big deal, but if there is a solution out there, I would love to know it. I don't know if you can see, but these here, these stitches are a bit crooked and a bit like open. And I think I will be able to like maybe sew it in on the back side again. I, that's what I did with like a bigger one here. I just sewed it in at the back side with some scrap yarn. But because I'm planning on casting on my um, fourth raglan sweater soon, I was just interested to hear if you guys have experienced this as well. I don't know why, but I'm like so out of breath today, even though like I'm not moving. <laughs> I'm just sitting down, but yeah, if you guys have any experience with this, maybe like knit it in the back loop or like twisting the stitch would like help it because I don't have the problem at the back side. And I was wondering, because actually you do the short rows in the back, right? But with Raglan, you, you come up in, in the front with like the last of the Raglan stitches, I think. So yeah, I think I'm not being very articulate today. <laughs> I don't think I have the best like way of expressing what I'm thinking today, which just happens some days, that's okay. But yeah, if you have any... Uh, solutions for this please let me know um, so this is taking its time which is totally fine I love taking time on this because I love the um, the yarn so much this is honestly the like nicest most squishiest softest thing ever and also, although I can't wait to wear it I'm fine with like knitting on it I will be casting on my first sleeve today picking up the stitches for that and um, yeah I'm just so happy with this <laughs> now that I've realized the mistake is in the back it's been secured it's okay I'm going to block it it's going to be fine I just hope this doesn't like get any bigger massively in the wash because comparing this to this this is going to be a lot bigger I think I've knitted like a medium in this and a large in this and I think raglan constructions, if they're like too oversized, I don't know if I like that, but I will see. I will just be like very gentle when blocking it. And I think oh, it just looks so nice. It looks so nice. I love it. Yeah. And I love that I just, <laughs> just thought that the backside was the front when, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip of my tea. Honestly, some days you just know while filming that there is not going to be a lot of edit editing that you need to do because you're calm. You just know what you want to say. And then other days, I don't know what I'm like saying. <laughs> I, words don't come easily to me. I feel a bit flustered. I feel like I'm out of breath, although I'm sitting down. So I need to chill. I did meditate this morning already, which I do need. Honestly, this is a great time to speak a bit more about it. I've actually been very open about this on social media, although in the last couple of years there have been more people following me on Instagram than before. Before it was just a couple of people you knew in real life and you knew on social media and now it's um, more people that you don't know in real life. Although I'm chatting to a lot of you guys and I love it, but I'm still such a believer in being like really open about these things because you need to like destigmatize them. But honestly, I've been struggling 
uh, quite a lot with my mental health uh, the last couple of weeks. Actually, the last couple of years or <laughs> since I can remember, but um, there are phases when it's just like very much um, manageable for me. And then there are phases when my anxiety gets so crippling <laughs> to like a point where I don't know how to act. And um, also my depressive, like when I get into a depressive episode, it's more difficult to, for me to do like daily things. And this last episode has been like triggered by my work again, which makes you wonder, <laughs> are you working in the right field? Are you doing the thing that you should be doing? Which is a whole, <laughs> whole nother topic to talk about. And actually I've shared about this recently and I've gotten so many like, so like encouraging and also understanding messages from um, people that are also working in academia and um, really like making me feel like I'm not alone with this being anxious to get bad feedback and putting yourself out there and your work is hard and I have this precondition like my mental precondition in a way I do have anyway so I'm prone to getting those episodes and I'm like I've been to therapy quite a lot of times. I did years of therapy, which really helped me. And I'm also taking antidepressants, which shouldn't be a huge deal. Um, but I'm still hesitant to say it on the internet, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm okay, really. It's just been quite a tough couple of weeks with work specifically and um yeah I'm actually I still have another whip to show you guys I just needed to get this off my chest and I think it's so important to be open about this actually Caroline from Caroline's Knits just in her last video talked about this as well and it made me like it, it encouraged me to talk about it as well just because there's no like nothing to gain from keeping it a secret that you're struggling sometimes and I think for people that also struggle with things like that it's so nice to hear someone openly talk about it and so i'd like like i'm happy to be that person <sighs> i don't know if i'm going to leave this in the video but just talking about it like immensely called me to calm me down i don't know if you can tell i was like really tense before which is a sign of me being anxious and i just feel very relaxed so I know some of you have been saying that you like my calm energy and trust me, I'm usually like people that actually know me wouldn't call me a calm person. <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I love to be more calm and actually doing this calms me down a lot. I love knitting for that reason as well. So now I'm going to put away my tea. Thank you so much for listening to my TED talk <laughs> about my mental health. And I hope if you're struggling with something similar, you're getting the help you need. There's no shame in going to a specialist, to like a doctor, to a psychiatrist, to a psychologist, to whatever you need in that moment. And I hope you're sharing about it with people that love you. Cause honestly, yeah, I couldn't like put in so many inspirational quotes, like this too shall pass, or there's always like, sun after rain although I like rain <laughs> but yeah never mind um moving on <sighs> I really appreciate other people talking and speaking up about it and so I just wanted to also speak a bit about it on here and say that it always gets better. Literally, it always gets better. I've had like so many really, really, really difficult moments where I didn't believe that it would get better again, but it always did. And like being a person 
that I find it difficult to trust that, I know now that it always does. So moving on with my whips. <laughs> okay, moving on with my whips. So you guys know about my sis let it get, although I know it's pronounced something like sis let it sock, Christmas sock. Um, I love this so much. These are like all of the colors that I love. There's orange and green and brown in here and beige. Um, and it did need a sister or brother. And uh, like I said in my last video, I didn't have a major sock knitting mojo the last couple of weeks actually after um, knitting socks uh, around Christmas. But then I don't know why, but I, <laughs> I called myself um, on, I told myself I need to be on knitting second sock duty. And this is where I cast on this second sock yesterday. And I think I made quite a nice like amount of progress actually. This is my second sock. I'm not going to talk about it any more than that. I'm just going to finish this and the other second sock that I, um, the other first sock that I showed you, so my two Christmas socks. I'm just going to try to finish them before spring. <laughs> so my goal is to knit them either this month or the next month. So they're finished before April. Maybe I'll, I'll be able to finish them this month, hopefully. Depends on all of the other things that I'm going to do. Which brings me to the point of me going a bit like swatch crazy. <laughs> I did a lot of swatches because I can't decide which project will be in my next cast on. I've also like, that's, that's like who I am as a knitter. I'm like, I'm going to take it slow. I have all of my sweater quantities in my stash. I'm going to knit them like each after the, uh, the next, I'm going to have like a small project going on the side, some socks, maybe a headband, maybe some mittens. And I have like two sweater projects going on at the same time. So I always have like maybe some soconette in the round and then some a bit more like concentration, like focus heavy parts of another project. So two projects that aren't at like the same um, progress point. But then I applied for a test knit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to take it slow but also I'm applying to a test knit, which does have like a tight schedule. Five weeks is enough time to make a sweater for me, mostly. But this one has, I think, some new techniques in it. So just guys, please keep your fingers crossed for me. <laughs> but I couldn't say no. It's another um, test knit by Gregoria Fibers. Who I tested before for her Jones sweater and I really like the process of testing for her. She actually um, provided the yarn. She had like a collaboration with Creme Kosovo. Again this time she is getting the test net sponsored by Isager or Isager. I'm going to say Isager. Yeah. She's getting the test net sponsored by Isager which I always wanted to try. And since we're not able to go to Denmark this spring, like we had planned, uh, we're going to do it next year. I thought that would be like a best opportunity to try another one of her beautiful patterns, get a few more experiences with test knitting, and then also try some Isa Greg yarn. So I picked my colors and it's going to be shipped from Denmark soon. And then I'm going to test it. So I have this plan set. I want to finish my Monday sweater, if possible beforehand. So I'm going to concentrate on the sleeves from now on. But I do also have another like couple of plans. And I did swatch for three of them just to make me help decide which one I'm going to cast on next as well. I was thinking, so I'm going to show you the swatches and then we're going to talk about them. And I might need some help from you guys. <laughs> so these are my swatches. All of them are from my 2023 knitting plans. 
so they're not like swatches where you just see if you can get gauged <laughs> that's only like the the black one is just for getting gauged the other one was for trying out the technique of the festival sweater and then the third one was to see which mohair i want to hold with my second lento so the black gauge swatch is for the cardigan number no. seven by my favorite things knitwear this is for the festival sweater by petite knit and this is for my second lento by Alina magazine so i can't decide which mohair i want to hold with this i tried out like a really like light like pure white one actually then i tried out a more of like a beigey white color cream cream white color then i tried out a second white one and then i tried holding the beige and the white one together which i think makes it a bit too like squishy when holding only fingering and lace weight yarn and knitting it with six centimeter no six millimeter needles it just feels weird and it felt weird with this one as well but because i did hold like a alpaca which wasn't lace was more like a two fingering weights together um although the woolly knits is like a light fingering for sure it did like even at some point feel a bit more like a lace weight it was like really just very delicate and like i said i'm not like extremely versed in all of these things i'm just like trying to learn more learn more about it it just yeah so i haven't decided which one i'm going to choose but i think i can decide that on my own although if you do have any opinions like feel free to share them but the one thing that i can't decide is which one i'm going to cast on next so knitting the festival sweater with the like bobble technique was um fun but also really difficult like the knitting three through the back loop is like no joke <laughs> to get those bobbles although again there are those like great um, instruction videos on in danish with like english undertitles which really helped but i really like the like shade of all of those i would like to have like a cardigan and also this is made with seven millimeter needles which would make this like a really quick <laughs> project probably but also I want to have like my second lento while the lento cowl is still going on. Like I can't decide. I need you guys to help me. Please feel free to comment which one you would knit next. And I will maybe put up a poll on Instagram as well. But it was so fun to knit all of these swatches. I know you can probably see in the background or um, whenever I've um, shot, like whenever I did a video up here. I haven't filmed anywhere else. In my past videos you probably also have seen that i'm i like to put up my swatches and i also like to keep them um i haven't yet ripped out a swatch i don't know might, i might do it with this one which is also going to be a thing i'm going to talk about in my acquisitions because it's a fingering hand dyed yarn which i actually bought off etsy and if i would like run low on the sweater i would take it but especially this one i want it i want to have i want to put on my on my board yeah i think it just inspires me so much to look at my swatches and actually like i said with this one the gauge was like two rows too um long with this one i just uh managed to like count Two and a half centimeters which is like a quarter of 10 centimeters i thought and if that is correct and i'm like i think it's like seven stitches um i measured that and that's bang on and also it's the suggested yarn so i don't think i'll have any problems with that and also with this um i haven't uh, measured it but i think it should be fine but like knitting with black yarn is no joke you guys i've never done it before and i've just realized like last night knitting it like not even being able to count the rows i'm like i need i need like special glasses with like lights <laughs> um like i'm on some kind of um mission i don't know um i've actually seen like lights that you can put around your neck that make you like 
shine light on your project while you're knitting it, which I think is not a great idea. Um, might ask for it for my birthday or something like that. I don't know. It's, yeah, whatever. So please do feel free to let me know which one you would cast on next. Like I said, my priority is getting my Monday sweater finished, uh, getting those socks finished. Maybe one gift knit, like I said. <laughs> I need to see what I feel like. Um, so moving on to my acquisitions. So a couple of weeks ago, I listened to Inga from Knitting Traditions podcast, which I really enjoy. I always watch her videos, I love them. Um, and she talked about ordering mohair on cones, which I love the idea of, especially in like colors that you would need for like smaller projects as well, and colors that you would need um, often. And she talked about them and uh, recommended or mentioned woolly yarn, which I then went on their website <laughs> and I ordered some cones of Surrey alpaca and mohair silk, um, which I think they look so nice. I mean, they do have like a lavender colored cone inside, which I prefer mine to be the cardboard, like the brownish color, but you can't really tell. So I have them up there on my shelf and I really like them. But then like I got into swatching, I have another, um, I have another sweater, the sweater number, I think 15. So the cable sweater by my favorite things knitwear that I want to make. And I have bought a uh, mohair for that, or maybe it's the baby alpaca lace. So I do have another one in like a very similar colorway to this, but I just wanted to see how they like, how they knit it up, how they felt after blocking. And so I haven't made any decisions yet, but I just think they're so cute. I actually got another one, a really small one. You can see the label. This is how they arrived. And this is another like small one. We can see those. So this is 150 gram and this is a 50 gram cone, um, which I think is so nice. So these two are the um, mohair silk. And this one is the alpaca, which I got with the intention of holding together with my next acquisition, which is this, the woolly chicken birchwood Merino Blend Superwash All-Rounder, which is such a nice like hand-dyed colorway. Um, like I said, the base is All-Rounder Merino Blend, which is 75 Merino and 25 Nylon. It's 400 meters for 100 grams, so bang on fingering for ply weight. I've actually caked one of those up already because I wanted to gauge swatch. So this is what it looks like in a cake. And this is what it looks like in a hank. And yeah, so I'm undecided of whether I wanted to hold with, can I, can I hold all of those? Um, undecided of which one to hold it with. Although I don't know why, but I don't know if I love like the really like clean white, like, crisp white look with this. I think this is going to make it a bit more soft, although I don't want it to look like exactly like my my um, Monday sweater, which it won't. Like this has a bit more of like orangey specks and brown and yeah, I think the orange is like the most dominant color, orange and brown. But yeah, so <laughs> I have all of these and I haven't decided on how to do it but this is supposed to be my lento which meant that i only had to get three of those uh fingering hangs which is one of the perks of like doing or one of the advantages of the lento the gauge is actually what so many people love about it but yeah i love these cones <laughs> i'm going to link the website where i got them um and uh the shipping was actually completely fine, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing like ordering anything from like Britain. 
So I also wanted to do a little giveaway for reaching 2,500 subscribers, which I thought would be like the next milestone uh, that we reach with this channel. And like I said, I had bought this sock set by Olivia and Oliver. I bought two of them. I got the DK and the normal weight sock set. And I wanted to give this to one of you guys. Um, I actually am going to make um, a sock set in DK with this colorway, which I really like. And I think um, my boyfriend would also really like it. So maybe it's going to be a present, uh, a sock knit for him. But with this, I wanted to give this to one of you guys for saying thank you for supporting this channel. And uh, because last time I loved reading through all of your comments about what you like about the pre-Christmas period, the pre-Christmas time, I wanted to know which one of your knitting plans for this year you're most excited for. So please make sure you're following the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, but that's not a necessity. If you don't have Instagram, that's okay. Or if you don't want to follow me, that's also okay. But make sure you're following the channel and make sure to comment what the like what is your knitting plan for this year you're most excited about. And I'm going to give one of these elderflower and cotton sock set by Olivia and Oliver Fibers to one of you guys. I hope you're also loving this colorway as much as I am. So I wanted to talk a bit more about Ravelry. Um, which I just put in all of my stash. Not all of it. I have a few like random miscellaneous items, a few scraps that I haven't put in there. And I actually don't know if I'm going to put all of my scraps in there, but I've updated it and maybe I can like put it in here. And I, I love it so much. I'm actually thinking about um, maybe with a friend, um, we're like, we did a in-person, knitting circle, like a meeting with other knitters um, pretty recently. Um, and I'm thinking about taking some of my yarn to like a yarn swap or something like that. Because some of the like leftover yarns from projects that I've finished and I love like this one, I do have like two um, balls of my alpaca left over, but I don't know if I'm like ever going to have a project where I would need that again. So I'm thinking about taking some of my yarn, um, like all of the yarn that I have and I don't intend to use and maybe do like kind of a yarn swap. But I also saw on, um, on Ravelry that you could like sell or also swap yarn on there, which I've not done before, <laughs> but maybe you guys have some experience with that. Please um, feel free to comment and tell me about those. And if you've like also done yarn, yarn swaps before, I would be interested in hearing about that. I'm actually thinking about like also Caroline Knits. I'm talking about her so much uh, this episode, but I really enjoy her video um, about all of her yeah, like yarn stash and how she uses Ravelry. She has um, talked about this like Excel spreadsheet that you can download when you've put in all of your stash. And I think my stash is like, a quarter size of hers, <laughs> I think, um, which I don't like, there's no need to compare, but um, I'm like, I'm really happy with my stash at the moment. I know there will be coming, like some yarn will be coming in this year, just from what I'm like planning on, um, where I'm planning on traveling. If everything goes to plan, I will be going to a yarn festival this year, which I'm so excited about already. And, uh, so there will be some yarn coming in as well, but I'm planning to knit so many projects from Stash as well. And I always buy with like a project in mind. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying Ravelry so much at the moment. It's basically what I wanted to say before I say goodbye. So I think that's everything for today's episode. Please comment which of the cast-ons should be next by the swatches that I've shown you guys today. Please um, subscribe if you like the video and consider entering the giveaway if you like Olivia and Oliver's um, sock sets as much as I do. And I'm going to be knitting on my sock again now. I think I'm going to hopefully be posting this on Sunday. So I wish you all a great new week. Stay healthy, take care of yourselves and happy knitting.
Bye.